while the fight against the epidemic is essentially being abandoned by this president, as bad as he was at mounting that fight, he's walked away from it now. And now we have this totally new crisis in which the president is ordering armed, in his words, heavily armed, active duty U.S. troops to be used against the American people on U.S. soil. And as much as this appears to be driven by the president's desire to try to look tough, today, I don't know if you saw this, today the president literally started saying that he hadn't actually been rushed to the safety bunker inside the White House because of protests outside the White House. Today he said, whatever you heard about that, about him being rushed to the bunker, that was fake news. Today he decided to explain that by saying he had gone to that bunker himself of his own accord because he wanted to inspect the bunker. Yes, the president is a bunker inspector now because he wouldn't want us to think that he needed to be moved somewhere for his own safety. He inspects bunkers. It's kind of a hobby. I mean, as much as, as any of this may be driven by something as stupid as the president's macho desire to look tougher than he is, to look like, you know, a fake general or some sort of cartoon dictator— his fantasies, however lame and transparent, have effect in the real world when they take the form of orders to the U.S. military. And this fantasy of his is about the U.S. military. And he has actually ordered the Pentagon to send armed, active-duty U.S. troops from the U.S. Army into the streets of Washington, D.C. to be deployed against the American people in American city streets. Now, is the Defense Department leadership of this country and the military leadership of this country going to be some sort of bulwark against that kind of craziness? This has been a remarkable 48 hours in terms of figuring out that the answer to that is no. Last night, Defense Secretary Mark Esper told NBC News that he only participated in that photo op. He only walked with the president across the park and stood in front of that church, that photo op for which they cleared out all of those protesters with chemical gas and pepper rounds and beatings. He says he only participated in that photo op as a representative of the, of the Department of Defense because, quote, I didn't know where I was going. I mean, to be clear, they didn't put a bag over his head and walk him backwards in circles three times before they sent him across that park. He appeared to know where he was, but last night he told NBC News that he was only did it because he didn't know where he was going. Just all of a sudden, ooh, look where I am. Today at the Pentagon, this morning at the Pentagon, Secretary Esper tried to walk that back. He denied that he ever said that to NBC News. He, in fact, did say that to NBC News. He implied at this morning's press briefing at the Pentagon that, yeah, he had known where he was going when he participated in that photo op, but he didn't really mean to be in that photo op. It was kind of inadvertent. Secretary Esper then, though, um, said that he wanted an investigation into U.S. military helicopters buzzing protesters in D.C. city streets to hit them with rotor wash and try to terrify them off the streets. He said he wanted an investigation into that. It didn't look safe to him. He also said he disagreed with the president that active duty U.S. soldiers should be deployed on American streets against the American people. Hmm. A little burst of independence from the defense secretary. It was interesting. This morning at the Pentagon, it quickly earned him some headlines about how the White House wasn't happy about his remarks. This apparent disagreement from him, him apparently disagreeing with the president on these matters. The White House press secretary suggested that Secretary Esper might not be defense secretary for long, depending on how the president really felt about those remarks. Well, that was all it took. Defense secretary folded completely. The Associated Press had reported earlier today that uh, these combat-trained troops from the 82nd Airborne who had been sent to bases around D.C., ready to deploy on, uh, on the streets of D.C., the AP had reported earlier today that they were going to be sent back home. Right? There's the defense secretary saying, I don't believe that active-duty troops should be here. I don't believe we should be using these helicopters this way. We need to look into that. Trying to sort of walk back the I didn't mean to participate in that photo op. Maybe that wasn't a good idea. And we get this word from the AP that the troops are actually going back to their bases. That's how we thought things were going to go today. A little burst of independence from a very clearly embarrassed, flummoxed, and confused defense secretary. But all it took was the White House and the White House press secretary taking these few little shots at Esper. Ooh, you might lose your job. You best not take a stance any different from using the president, even if it's about your department even if it's about him wanting to use U.S. troops against the American people, and we know you don't want to do that, best not take a stance that differs from the president's whatsoever. 
these little shots from the White House, remark from the White House press spokesperson. And Secretary Esper got right back in line. And this was the Associated Press reporting later in the day. Quote, Army Secretary Ryan McCarthy told the Associated Press today that he received notice of the Pentagon order to send about 200 soldiers with the 82nd Airborne's immediate response force home. He received word of that order just after 10 a.m. today. Hours later, though, the Pentagon notified the Army Secretary that Defense Secretary Mark Esper had reversed that earlier decision. McCarthy told the Associated Press he was told about the reversal after Esper attended a meeting at the White House. So it looked like the defense secretary might stand up against some of this madness, and then he just instantly caved. And then, yes, we get General Mattis speaking some from sort of beyond the political grave today, breaking his silence and saying, this can't happen. The current military leadership has just capitulated entirely. So Mattis gets up on his hind legs finally and says, this cannot be. But a retired defense secretary isn't much compared to a serving one who won't stand up or who only stands up for a second and then gets immediately chased back into his hidey hole. And his military counterpart, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, really did put on combat fatigues and strut around the streets of Washington, D.C. like he was trying on military rule for size. And he hasn't said beep about that since he did it. 